mean, how does <coughs> the fact there's been almost no changes in the Eastern Conference, does that uh, affect you better or worse? I mean, maybe you would have liked to see New Jersey go into fire sale mode or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I doubt, uh, knowing the competitive spirit that Rod Thorne has, uh, he was ever going to go into that fire sale mode, but uh, it probably was an option they considered, given the uh, at least some of the speculation that was out there. But uh, knowing Rod at the end of the day, uh, he fully intends to try to catch the Toronto Raptors. So uh, we've got our work cut out. Uh, we're going to try to continue to worry about what we do on the floor. Uh, we, you really have to worry about uh, what you do in-house and not what uh, others are doing. And, and right now we somewhat control our own destiny, especially the way the schedule plays out and and uh, with the lead that we have. So we'll uh, we'll see how it works. Somewhat of a relief to Chicago. No one really out went out where they improved themselves either. Yeah. Again, you look at the landscape and you say, <coughs> "Excuse me, it's uh, it's exactly where it was yesterday." Um, with one big exception, I think Miami is probably reeling a little bit today after, after the injury to Dwayne. You hate to see that, but it, it clearly is potentially an effect. Uh, it will affect the uh, the playoff race, but uh, everyone else is largely the same. How do you see your team in the greater context of the landscape of the Eastern Conference going forward, and then maybe into the playoffs? Where do you guys sit? Well, uh, right now, on, on top of the Atlantic and holding holding uh, the fort together, uh, hopefully we can go out and play a little better than we did last night. But, uh, again, we're competitive. We're right there in the thick of it. Uh, perhaps uh, surprising to us, again, is the fact that, you know, there were some things that happened this year, New Jersey having the injury situations that they've had. And, you know, they're the team that probably, uh, you know, at least because of their circumstances, it opened the door for us to take advantage of it. But uh, the fact that we've come together as a group and we've got the, the type of players we have and the type of talent we have and we're, we're holding ground in a very wide open race. I, I think the, you know, the East is wide open and you can't take anything for granted. You have to play every game like it uh, it's meaningful and um, you know hopefully we can instill that attitude and, and spirit in the players as wide open as it was did you ever did it ever cross your mind to really do something dramatic and, and, and try and uh, position yourself even better than you are no there, there really wasn't anything you know too dramatic uh, out there in the way of discussions but uh, you know, we, we like where we are, and uh, you know, to jeopardize uh, something to uh, you know take a swing right now uh, probably wouldn't be the right thing. Uh, again, we'll, we'll see how it plays out, and you always have to think on the move here. You've, you've got to be able to uh, make adjustments. Uh, but you know, we like where we are. We like our team. Uh, we think the city likes our team. We think you guys like our team. Uh, you know, it's a it's a great group of guys, and. You know, everyone's uh, everyone's pulling the cart right now, rather than pushing a string. So, uh, I'd like to think that uh, you know, we're something major. If it was there and we had a chance to improve, yeah, we would have looked at, but uh, nothing came up like that. From a personal standpoint, um, yeah, is there a chance now that you guys? I, it seems from the outside looking in, um, it's a bit of a, an over the hump sort of situation. The trade deadline's out of the way now. Does it give you a chance to kind of sit back and enjoy this team? And I know your job is never done. But. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I ever enjoy it, but uh, there is one less uh, deadline there. There's uh, you know a little bit more of a focus now as we prepare for the draft. Uh, I, I'm actually looking at the draft as somewhat of an unknown right now because we may not have our pick. Um, success comes with a cost because the, the pick is protected, as everyone knows, to 15. If we finish 16 or higher, then uh, we're not going to have that pick. It goes on to Charlotte you know, via Cleveland, and uh, that happened, I believe, back to the Daniel Marshall trade uh, several years earlier. But uh, you, know, you look at the next phase. The next phase is draft preparation, scouting for the, the free agents, uh, there's never a day that, that you relax, and, and I know that uh, we're actually talking right now about you know plans for the summer. How are we going to go about things this summer? Uh, how are national team commitments going to affect our schedule? Uh, we may or may not participate in summer league because of some of the things that are taking place: lack of a draft pick, uh, commitments to the national teams, things like that. We may de deploy the resources other ways, uh, you know, to try to make sure that we go out and maximize our opportunity to improve the team via free agency 
Uh, we may have a free agent mini camp at some point rather than the conventional draft workouts. Uh, those draft workout rules are actually in flux right now, and we're still waiting word from the league on the final version of, of what that's going to look like. But uh, there may be some restrictions on just how many draft workouts you can have. So it, there's a lot of detail there that we're waiting on some, some final stuff. But uh, I don't know that there's ever a day to relax. So. Your group of players seem to genuinely really like each other, and I'm sure that was a bit of a factor, mm -hmm. not, not busting up this team. How rare is that? It's pretty rare. Uh, I've, I've been around a, a lot of teams and you know, heard all the stories about all the, the other locker rooms in the league and you know, several years' worth of stories, and uh, we've got a great group, and um, it's, it's really something special, and I think that uh, you know, it's rare to, to have a real competitive group that, that seems to like each other and, and uh, care for one another and support one another the way they do. And uh, they're very likable. They're a little bit boring, I, I would say, you know, to you guys. Um, there, you know, I've, there's some great lines and stories about the past and compared to right now. But, uh, boy, I kind of like it boring as long as we're winning. <laughs> so that's because uh, I've had competitive and Charles Barkley at the same time. <laughs> and it was never a dull moment. We could bring Oakley back. Yeah. It always seems like the trade deadline lately has been a bit of a disappointment. Is that just because it's, it's so tough to make a deal and maybe some guys would rather wait till the offseason when, when there's less pressure? Or? Uh, you know, disappointment in, uh, in you know, well. fans and media, sure. Uh, you know, there's a little less activity. Some years, more than others, there's, there's a lot of things happening. Uh, I don't know. There's, there just seems to be a lot of conversation. Uh, the late Greg Cotton Fitzsimmons used to always say the only people that get rich are the phone companies. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of conversation and, you know, even some interesting things that happen along the way. You know, two weeks ago you might have a call with somebody and talk to somebody and lo and behold you get a call the day of and it really puts you into a little bit of a tailspin because you've got to now reevaluate something in, in short order. I mean, you know, you get some, some odd calls at some odd times, but... Uh, you know, I, I'm trying to constantly push to, to figure out if there's ways to improve so that you avoid deadlines. And if you can avoid the deadlines, um, you know, there's that natural tendency to think if you wait till the last minute, you might get more, you might leverage something, uh, you might get someone to jump. Uh, I, I feel like uh, you make a deal when the deal's there. And, you know, I think you guys saw that this summer. We, we just went about it and fortunately found some trade partners and some viable deals to to change the face of the team and starting by changing the face of the team kind of got the ball rolling for us and you know the rest uh you know started to fall into place but thank you okay thank you. hey guys thank you thanks Brian. appreciate it thanks for waiting around sorry we were thanks for waiting around because he was on the phone on lots lots going what on GMs do. lots of lots of nothing going on as uh, the coach jack armstrong joins us how are you coach i'm great Let's get your thoughts first off on the uh, the deal. Because you guys were tap dancing the whole time, waiting for Brian <laughs> no, to come no, on. He was late. We were actually waiting on. for you to come on and tell us all it's about this. It's all on this. me now. Huh? Uh, Juan Dixon. Oh, hang on. We're going to uh, go right back to Air Canada oh, Center. Right We've got Norma. You can think about Juan Dixon for a minute I'm or two. I'm pondering my <laughs> thoughts as we speak. Oh, he's not ready? All right. Now you do have time. I have time? <laughs> Brian, hold on a minute until yeah, I'm you done. tell Brian to hold on. I think you weren't first in line <laughs> just because of that wriggle. You still are first in line. <laughs> Juan Dixon, coach. I'm a huge Juan Dixon fan. I think he brings a, a, an intensity level, an understanding of how to play both guard spots. He can shoot the ball. Uh, I think he's a guy that is one of those guys that makes big shots when you need them. And, and I think he gives the Raptors a little bit more playmaking ability from the two-guard spot. Uh, he gives him more basketball IQ there. I think Fred Jones was one of those guys that was very uncomfortable with the ball, didn't have great ball skills in terms of being able to make plays for others. And I think Juan Dixon has a knack when you have him along with a T.J. Ford or a Jose Calderon uh, to really be able to upgrade the level of decision-making. And I think when you talk about playing playoff basketball, uh, it's always nice to have another uh, tested guard that really will mm -hmm. make good decisions under pressure. All right. Now it's time to go back to Brian right, Colangelo. Ahead, Brian. He knows you're done. So uh, <laughs> here's Brian Colangelo with Norma Wick. Norma? 